Hi, how you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate Polaroid from a Mamiya 645. I absolutely adore the Polaroid that you used to pull on the 645s. They're brilliant. The, the, the colors in them and, and the depth that they had and the realism they had were, were absolutely stunning. So I want to try and recreate that as close as possible as I can within Lightroom for you. So I'm going to reset this and walk you through the process. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just increase the color temperature up to about plus 10, and I'm just going to bring that tint down to minus 10. There we go. And I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit to, I would say it's about half a stop. So on here, it's just under half a stop. So plus four or 0.4 if you want to be accurate. And then the contrast is going to boost that up a little bit to about plus 20. Now, Polaroids were kind of flat. So we want to try and mimic that. The highlights are going to push them up to about plus 10. And also I'm going to bring the shadows up probably to around plus 20. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to bring the whites down to around minus 40. And the blacks up. I'm going to bring them up to about plus 50. So there we go. So what we've done here is just created quite a flat image. We just look quickly before and after. We flattened the image. But also, yes, we have affected that white balance. But we will correct that in a minute. Um, it's just given us a real nice flat surface to work from, okay? So we're gonna add a little bit of texture into this and also a little bit of clarity. So same amount, plus 10 for both of them. That just gives us a little bit more of a, a little bit more clarity within the shot. Gonna bring the saturation down to about minus 20 on this, just to, again, strip, start stripping out that color a little bit. Starting to look a little bit washed out now, like a Polaroid. Um, so we're going to do a lot of work in the tone curve. Well, it's not a lot of work. It's just a major, major adjustment. And this is what's going to give us that Polaroid look. So we just click in the middle and I'm going to bring this down to about there. That's pretty good. Um, and I'm going to mat off the white. So I'm just going to drag this down to about there. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to make another point here. And I'm going to bring that up to this first line here. See this first crossover section here. And then I'm going to pull the blacks up so that they become about there. So they're almost a little bit parallel with that line there. Can you see? So the trick is to try and get that so it's a nice gradual curve here. So about there. Can you see that's a little bit more, a little bit more gradual as it goes up. So that's looking pretty good. And you can see there that that's given us the Polaroid look almost there just with them tones. So we're, we're matting out them blacks and then whites and that gives us that, that beautiful tone. So I'm going to do just some basic adjustments on the red, green and blue as well. Really, really simple with this. So we're just going to isolate that middle section there. Come down to the bottom and just add a little point there and then just a little point down here. And I think that looks pretty good. We can just bring this a little bit higher about there. That's good. Now what we can do is right click, copy all of them settings and go to the green and paste that. And then do the same on the blue and paste that. There we go. So that gives us our tone curve. So you can see there that's created almost that, that Polaroid look. But now I just want to tweak the colors a little bit and do some color grading as well. So let's start within the, the hue section here. So let's just bring that red down a little bit to about minus 10. And then what I'm gonna do from green onwards, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull these colors out. So I'm just gonna push these to minus 50. them colors we're just dulling them down now it doesn't look like we're doing a lot of the minute um, that's because we still have to do the saturation and luminance but what we're doing is we're just changing them hues so they're a little bit in the previous section you can see here so the greens are now more yellow the aqua are more green the blue are more aqua the purple are more blue and the magenta are more purple so we're just bringing all of them down just to give us um, more of a more of a matte finish to the image okay 
So let's come to the saturation then and let's just bring this down to around minus 20. And same with the yellow, we're probably going to go a little bit more. This is what's going to color correct the image for us. So there we go, minus 70 works. That's that's a bit of a tipping point. That looks pretty good. And I think the luminance as well might just, I think I just brought down the, the orange a little bit and same with the yellow as well. I think it was about there, 32. That's pretty good. That just gives us um, a little bit less sort of power in them colors. So you can see there, that's what we've done. We've, we've now color corrected that. So the tone curve really give us the Polaroid and then this has given us that that lovely tone of color. So what I want to do is just add a little bit of color back into it because the Polaroids, they, they do have color in them, obviously, um, but they have a specific color. They, use, they tend to usually have the more yellows and oranges and then the, um, the, the kind of blues within the shadows. So sorry, within the highlights. So we're going to kind of add that to it. So within the highlights, let's just bring this round to, I think it's a, about 220 around there. That's usually um, a really good starting point for uh, adding blues. Saturation of around uh, between 10 and 15. So let's just add that. You can see what that's doing. It's just cooling that off. Let's go to the shadows and let's add a number of around 20 21 around there is pretty good and saturation i'm just going to type in 10 so there's not too much you can see instantly what that's just done if i take that away again you can see that's just warmed up her skin tones and that's what's given us that polaroid look within her skin so that's really really subtle but it makes a massive massive difference okay now let's come down here. I'm not going to sharpen it because uh, Polaroids are notoriously not sharp. We can add some noise reduction if we want to, um, especially in the color, but I'll leave that up to you. I tend to not do that, but if you want to, you can add a little bit. It will help, but remember we're trying to mimic a Polaroid and, and Polaroids aren't perfect. They're, they're, they're really not. And it's the imperfections that make them so perfect, I suppose. So the next thing then is to add some grain. So let's just increase that. I would say a minimum of 15 and probably a maximum of around 30. So I'll go up to 30, keep the size at 25 and the roughness at 50. That again gives us a bit of a, um, uh, a really, really nice rough edge to the image. Now, Polaroids, usually they're 100 ISO, so... Um, you can leave that off as well and you will get a much smoother look but i i do like to add a little bit of grain to this because it does take it beyond uh having a, an image that is exactly like a polaroid because we're we're evolving from that it is um it is a lightroom edit after all so i just think the grain binds everything that we've done together and it just makes it work a lot better okay and then finally on this image, what I'm going to do is just add a radial filter. I'm just going to bring that into her face there and elongate that out a little bit. So let me just go to the top here. There we go. Just spin that around a little bit more. And I'm just going to take that mask off and just push that exposure up just a little bit. Again, giving us that Polaroid look where some sections are a little bit blown out and some aren't so i'm also going to right click on that duplicate that bring that down to her arm but i'm and then going to follow the contours of her arm again you could do this with a brush if you wanted to as well i just find this a lot easier so there we go in fact we could extend that a little bit up to her hair there as well there we go so that's enough just to just to bring out the highlights on the side there and that will just give us a little bit more of a three-dimensional look to the image so that's how you do it so we press the y key you'll see the before and after there you can see what i've done and just really manipulating them colors and just playing around with that tone curve and really the key for this is matting off then blacks and whites and giving it a real real flat look and then 
stripping out most of the colors and then adding some color back in with the with the color grade there and up here in the basic panel we've just really flattened the image so it's quite a basic edit but it's really really powerful um, and I, I do think that's really really close to a uh, a Polaroid that was used on the, the 645 so yeah I really really like that I hope you've enjoyed that I look forward to seeing your images and I'll see you in the next video take care bye bye